Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, creator of Approval Dust. I want to tell you a story that I had at a client where they had moved offices, and because they had moved, they had to physically change the fax number. This is a big deal to the company because a lot of their payments actually come in by fax. And so when they moved, they gave us an incorrect fax number, which means the day after we had switched into the new fax number, all of a sudden, all their payments are going to the wrong place. The accounting came down in a panic, an absolute panic. Up until this point, we'd only been there about two months at this client, and it had taken them a long time to release, usually about a month in between. And their releases were usually buggy. They went bad. So you can imagine the panic of this lady who all of a sudden her entire receivables are being shipped to the wrong place. She explained to us that we needed to use this different fax number and said it was really important. We let her know that we'd get right on it. And we did. Because before we moved, we had used the process I'm about to show you to refactor all of the reporting that they did that sent the faxes and sent the letters. And because of that, we had localized everything to a single place. We simply changed the fax number re-ran our test, made sure everything was now okay, checked it in, pushed the automated build and the automated deploy, and within two minutes we had fixed the problem, put it in production. And it was after doing that we were able to look up and realize that she had walked across the building to our boss to impress upon him how urgent this was, because she was still used to a long cycle between fixes. In fact, we actually just got up and went over and said, you don't need to convince him, it's already fixed and in production. Let's go take a look at how this is done. So first, if you haven't already seen the videos on testing views, RDLC reports are of course another view, and we're gonna use the practice of model plus view is gonna test the result. This way we can test that the reports are being generated correctly given the correct data. It's also worth noting that of the four things that we care about in testing, this is really gonna focus on regression. My purpose here is to see that nothing has changed. And to do that, I need good granularity, but I'm not gonna achieve this granularity in the normal way, which is good reporters, smaller tests. I'm gonna achieve this granularity by running my test really quickly and achieving temporal granularity. So I'll know if the thing I just did has messed up what I was doing. All right, let's take a look. So here's our RDLC report for envelopes. I'm using a fictitious report for my actual training company, Developmentor, that I train with. And what I want to do first is get a test on this to lock it. These are called characterization tests by Michael Feathers. If we go in here, I'm going to do a test. I'm going to do a test simple envelope. And to do that, what I first need is my view. So the view is the name of the report. And that is going to be a combination of the name of the namespace the report is residing in added on to the name of the actual RDLC report. Next, I'm going to need my model. So I'm going to new up my data set. It was a letters data table. And of course, I need some data in there, but I don't really care too much about the data. So I'm just going to add some test rows, and I only need one of them in this case. And now I'm going to do my test that verifies that the view in the model will render the right result. So this is going to be an RDLC reporter. Verify the report. The name of the report is the view, and the name of the data is the model. Let's give this a run and see what happens. Great. Now this is offering a fair amount of feedback, but I actually don't really care about that too much, because what I want to know is just that it used to work in the same way. But it is relevant to know that that big red thing was gone. So I'm going to need two cases in this case to do that. As I mentioned from previous episodes, I'm also using a clipboard reporter. And that's going to copy to my clipboard the command line needed to move the receive file over to the approve file. Now that I have this working, I can see it pass. But as I said before, that one case is not sufficient. I'm going to need a second case. So let me clone this and test an overdue envelope. 
Now most of this is exactly the same, but I need a specific field on the model to be different. And that field is going to be overdue. I need overdue to be true for this to work. And so I'm just going to manually override that value. Great. Now I can see the way it looks with an overdue as well. So those are my two use cases. Let me just approve that last one and make sure that they're still working. Now that I have this set up, I can go and I can change my report. But when I change my report, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second data set for the address. And to do that, I'm going to have to slightly alter my reports. Because this is set up to only use a single model. So what I'm going to do first is refactor this to be a little more verbose just to prep it so it's easy to go. So the first thing is I need the assembly name. I can get that from any number of places. In this place, I'm going to get it from my current place because I have everything in one place. So the type of a class that's in the same assembly as the RDLC report, that assembly. And then this model is going to need to go to a paradigm to use multiple models. And so that's going to be a new data pair, which is just a dictionary, but allows for this really nice syntax where I can pair in the multiple things with the names of the report. Now, I could go and get the name from here. It's actually in here as data set one. But I never remember to do that. So what I usually do is just use some fake thing. Then run my test. And you'll see in the error report that it wasn't allowed. The legal matches were data set one. And so I'll take that to figure out what my actual name was. If I run this, it should now pass. Great. Let me go and convert the second one to be the same pattern. Now both of them are working and both of them are in a place where I can easily add my second data set. Before I do that, let's actually go and add it to the report. I need to add a new data set. So what I'm going to do is go here and say new data set and I'm going to call this the company address. Now it's not going to be a traditional data set, I'm going to use just a regular object and I'm going to use an object of type address. Great, this gives me everything I need. Now let me go first. I haven't changed anything, so this is a very small step to make sure that I'm at least doing it correct. I should pass in something of company address and it's going to be company info dot address. Except for this actually needs to come in as an array of something. So I'm going to do a new array of company address. I need to add this to both of my reports. And if I run everything, it should still pass. Notice I'm getting good granularity here, not from anything my tests are doing, simply from the fact that they are continually being run. So I know that each step is still working. Now they have this done, I'm going to start by swapping out a piece of this code. I'm going to do that by changing it to an expression. So I'm going to say equals and use the data set company address, the first address. Now I need to add a new line. And then I need to add the second address. Again, another new line and the city. A nice comma in there. And the state. The zip code. One of the things you need to make sure to do is to save your RDLC designs. 
in and of itself, running the test won't save it and sometimes leads to bad results. Uh, so you can see I have the new result and things are wrong. You can see the slash r slash n not doing what you expect it to do. And this is because RDLC reports are actually a form of Visual Basic script, which is one of the things I dislike about RDLC reports. But because my test is protecting me, I can easily go back, recognize my error, and replace it with a BB line. I'm going to replace that and in multiple places. Save my report and rerun my test. And you can see I've accidentally bolded the text. It wasn't on purpose, and I'm not entirely sure what I meant or how I did it. Ah, when I went to build my code with Control Shift B, I must not have pressed the Shift key and accidentally Control B, which bolded my code. Let me unbold that, save it, and rebuild my test to make sure that everything is now working. Great, now everything is working. I have my test confirming that everything's working in the same way, and I have my address information gone to a single place. So if I need to change any part of it, one place will change it in all the reports, which is exactly what we did for the 20 or so reports at this particular client, which is why it was so easy to change and update the fax number when the time came. I hope this has been helpful. If you're doing RDLC reports yourself, try them out with approval tests. I'd like to close by talking about a source of most of my contributors, which is the local code camps. If you haven't been to a code camp in your own area, I suggest you Google one and find out where it's located. Most areas have a code camps, and these events are free and usually run the length of a weekend or a Saturday. The best presenters I know in the world will also go to the code camps because they like practicing there. The code camps are a lot of fun and they care about their communities, which means for a free event, you get access to some of the best speakers in the world. I encourage you to check them out yourself. Not only have I met a lot of my contributors there, but I also met John Gallery there, who brought me onto the extremely popular Herding Code podcast, which is the source of the second most contributors to approval tests. As always, if you have any further questions about approval tests, tweet them with the hash approval test. I monitor that and will answer you promptly.